Well, we are now entering our third week of class, and we are uh, finishing up the envisioning phase. And uh, like I mentioned in the first lecture, where we did an overview of the phases, it's best to see the phases as overlapping. And so uh, a lot of what we talked about last week about assessment and residencies um, and the calling and those sort of things are really blending in in that envisioning phase into that preparing phase. Um, there's one last thing I want to just kind of hit on for the envisioning phase before we do progress into preparing for a new church. Um, and that is uh, working through the question, where is God leading me to plant churches? Um, you've got two of the lectures this week, uh, one on uh, demographic analysis um, that networks and uh, uh, church plant networks and other denominational groups can provide for you uh, that provide things such as uh, population numbers, um, um, ethnic uh, diversity percentages, median income, um, you know, um, average uh, household with a, a master's degree, those type of things to give you an idea of the average person who lives in your community um, and the different demogra demographic uh, breakdowns. Um, and then you also uh, heard a lecture about community mapping and uh, really just how do you get to know and exegete your uh, community that God um, is calling you to. And uh, so that was with Mike Sowers uh, for community mapping. And so uh, with those two combined, uh, this one is a little bit more of, of, it's going to wrap up some of that, but also explore another way of how do you discern where God is calling me? Where is God uh, leading me and my family to go and plant churches? And so I want to talk about the, about the concept of uh, vision trips. And then I want to look at uh, Google mapping and how you can actually use Google Maps to do what we talked about in the uh, community mapping lecture. You can um, uh, make a digital version. So um, it's important to do both, of course, of um, doing a digital version where you have some things, but also do on the ground um, uh, analysis as well. Because uh, that will give you a lot more. But I want to show you how you can get started while you're envisioning, while you're still kind of thinking through, praying, and discerning where God is calling you. Uh, a Google Map can really help you. Um, answer some of these questions. So let's talk about vision trips first. And uh, this whole uh, whole lecture is really about getting to know your target community while discerning God's call to a certain place. Uh, so where is God calling you to? Um, you, God may be leading you to, um, in some, either now or in the future, to actually plant uh, churches in the town that you're living in now. And so uh, part of this lecture is not even going to really apply to you um, as far as taking trips. But you still need to be asking the same questions. So even if uh, it's your city that you're planting in, or if it's one uh, 2,500 miles away or an hour or two away, you still need to ask the same questions. Uh, just know that some of the logistics will be different. Um, so for, for me personally, and uh, I'll be sharing a little bit about our personal journey, a little bit more in this lecture than some others, uh, just because we're kind of right in the middle of, of, of finishing up this part uh, of the envisioning phase, and we're getting ready to, to move. Um, here in just a few days. And so uh, for us, uh, we actually did um, a vision trip to Boston, Massachusetts back in 2014. It was the fall of 2014. And um, uh, the Boston was one of the 32 cities that the mission board that my denomination um, has identified as a city that uh, needs more churches. Uh, it was about 97% unevangelical. And so um, uh, I had some uh, academic uh, interest in the city and some other factors, and so we um, we just took a trip. Uh, we uh, connected with some pastors, I made some phone calls, and we, um, my wife and I, we didn't have our son at that time. We went to Boston and we just explored the city. We started asking some questions, connecting with some other pastors and uh, some of the other network leaders, and um, you know we were looking. Okay, it's God calling us to Boston, and we actually came back from that trip realizing, no, nope, that's just not our place. And uh, so the, the real, the really good thing about that trip is, yeah, it cost us some money and some time and some things. We had to take some days off of work and whatnot. Um, but it gave us the questions to ask for the second time that we would take a vision trip to the city where we were actually going to uh, in Calgary. And uh, so uh, during this whole time of envisioning, um, we had ideas and passions for church planting, uh, but we didn't know where. Uh, our church was helping us ask some questions about location. We were even thinking maybe somewhere in Winston-Salem. Um, 
I had already uh, done some demographic research of different communities in Winston, and uh, we're trying to assess the uh, the health of churches in those communities to see, okay, well, where here in Winston would be a good place for us to uh, potentially plant. We even bought a condo near Wake Forest University, really thinking well, maybe this would be where God would lead us to plant um, a church. And so uh, we had done a lot of this um, research for the city that we were currently living in, um, and then in the summer of 20, or actually the fall of 2015, uh, God uh, kind of stepped in in a really cool way and uh, led us to start exploring a city in another country uh, 26 or so hundred miles away uh, in Calgary. And so uh, vision trips, um, I've done several of these over the last year. Uh, I've done seven trips to Calgary and all of those were vision trips. Um, but uh, I would say at least three of those were vision trips. And um, so I've done seven in the last uh, year. And uh, getting ready to move there permanently now. So uh, let's talk about vision trips and what those are. Uh, so what are they? Uh, they're essentially trips you take uh, to the city you believe God may be leading you to in order to look, listen, and learn. And we're going to add another one, prayer. But you want to see that prayer is kind of sur surrounding all of this. Um, as you're looking, you're praying. As you're listening, you're praying. And as you're learning, you're praying. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a trip to a city um, where you think God may be leading you. And you may go to multiple cities. Uh, we went to Boston first. And uh, after we kind of prayed and discerned, and a few weeks later, we realized that it wasn't our city. Uh, and then the next round, a little over a year later, uh, we did a vision trip to Calgary. And then we did a second and a third, and we started realizing that was our, our, um, our city. I think I was calling this to for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and so, um, but we had to go and actually taste the city. I had to go, go and feel the city. I had to go and uh, walk around and talk to people who live there and, and, and connect with other pastors and just get a feel of it for myself. And, you know, there's something special about being in the middle of that city and just praying over the lostness there and praying for the other churches there and then just listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, and so that's what uh, we did. I was invited by a church here in Winston-Salem, where Piedmont uh, is located in North Carolina, and the uh, church had a strategic partnership to plant churches in Calgary, and so uh, one of the, the uh, lay members who was uh, kind of the champion for Calgary um, got connected to me through my seminary professor um, in my doctorate program, and we had lunch, and he invited me to go on a trip. And he said, he said, and here, here is his words. His name is Mark Gilbert. Um, he's, a, he's a great man at Calvary Baptist Church. And he said, um, uh, would you consider going on a trip with me to Calgary and let's just see what God wants to do? And that phrase, let's just see what God wants to do, has uh, just resounded, has rung in my, in my ears uh, for over, over the last uh, 18 months now um, because we did go on a trip. Um, I went the first time in October 2015. It was um, me and... Um, another potential church planner that they were talking to as well, and then two uh, gentlemen from the church, uh, Mark, one of them, and uh, so was, uh, we four uh, flew up to Calgary. Um, I raised half of the money to go, and um, Mark uh, Gilbert at Calgary actually paid for the other half, um, and so I raised the money. We went for four days, and uh, we explored the city. We connected with the pastors, and uh, my wife wasn't able to go, or we... Uh, just had our son. He was, uh, I think, four or five months at the time, and uh, we weren't quite ready to fly um, uh, across the uh, continent with a with a newborn. And so, um, <clears throat> I ended up going on that trip myself, and really just to ask some questions. And I wanted to look, I wanted to see what the city was about, I wanted to listen to the stories of the people living there, the stories of the, of the Christians living there, uh, and I wanted to learn. I wanted to um, ask questions of the leaders and the pastors. Say, okay, so why should my family consider planting our lives here um, in order to plant churches here. Um, and it was in the vision trips, and this is why we were focusing a, a lecture on it, that vision trip really, um, they, they were very influential in our family deciding uh, that, yes, Calgary was our city. Um, and so uh, what are vision trips? Well, they're essentially a trip you take, um, but they're not just a trip. They're not a vacation. Uh, you're doing work. You're, you're doing very specific things. So I want to help you um, as we go through this kind of, know what to do on a trip and what to do after a trip. Um, so how do you prepare for one? Uh, I would first say assess why you feel you should go to this particular city. Um, when we were looking at Boston, um, I had a little bit more selfish reasons, uh, to be honest, about going to Boston. Um, it was a, uh, it's a university saturated city, had the highest percentage of college students of any U.S. city. And uh, I think it's 112, 120 different universities just in the Boston metro area. So there's a lot of college students. And um, I was working out of college at Piedmont. 
and I, uh, my wife and I had just bought a home near Wake Forest University, and we were ministering to college students through our church, and so we're thinking, well, it's a college, kind of a college city, and it's a, it's a growing city, it's a very influential city, um, so maybe that would be where God would take us, and so um, that was part of our assessment, why do we feel we should go, but it's more than you know, I couldn't just say, oh, yeah, we're going to go to Boston. Well, we had to do a vision trip. We had to go and see and, and ask some more questions. So then the th as I started, we started to assess. We we got to the point where my wife and I said, okay, well, we think we should at least go and explore it. We should at least go and visit and and see what's going on and just see if God speaks to us there, see if God starts to lead us there. Um, and so that's what we did. And so to prepare, um, I started connecting with local pastors and other network leaders. Um, I did some phone calls with pastors saying, hey, just tell me about your city. Tell me about what's happening with new churches getting started. What's the need for new churches? Um, you know, just kind of give me the lay of the land and talked with. Uh, so we, through uh, as a Southern Baptist, um, our mission board, the North American Mission Board, helps um, us facilitate these kind of things. And they have a uh, director in each of their uh, 32 target cities. Um, and uh, we actually connected with that um, gentleman and uh, had some phone calls with him, did several emails, and he helped us plan the trip. He uh, actually helped us find a place to stay, and he kind of gave us a tour, and um, we spent, uh, I think we spent uh, three days, I think it was a total of five-day trip, um, uh, traveling, and then um, three days in the middle, I think it was. And so we, uh, but we connected with them over the phone th at least two or three months before we even went. Um, because I wanted to know, hey, can I have lunch with you on Monday? Can I have dinner with you on uh, Tuesday? Can you show me your church Monday morning? You know, so plan all those things out. Uh, found out who I need to talk to, and, and um, you know, ask the, the the network leader who are the four or five pastors that you think I should connect to. And we were there. We flew up on a Saturday, and so we actually worshipped with um, a church there on Sunday morning to see what. Sunday morning church it looks like, and then there was a new plant getting started that um, was holding services Sunday night, and so we went there as well um, and got to taste of two different church plants uh, there in the city. Um, and then we also beforehand to prepare, we had to plan our logistics, flights, how much is that going to cost? Since it was in Boston, it was about a 13 to 14 hour drive. It was cheaper for us to fly, uh, but if you're going an hour or two or three down the road, then you're talking about driving. Uh, so you want to plan out those logistics of, of driving. Uh, back and forth and how much that's going to cost. Fuel costs, meal costs, lodging, all those things. Get a good estimate of what's going to cost you because you have to raise those funds. Um, a vision trip is not uh, not cheap. Um, uh, when uh, for, for my wife and I, um, it cost at least a um, thousand to twelve hundred dollars because you're talking two plane tickets. Um, you're talking uh, motel potentially for three or four nights. You're talking food for three or four days that you don't have groceries for and a uh, rental car if you, um, unless you're able to secure a vehicle. In Boston, uh, we didn't have to rent a car. The guy actually gave us his van to drive around. Uh, but for some of our trips in Calgary, we've had to rent our own vehicle um, just to make it easy on everybody. Um, and we also did some pre-research on the city. I started looking up um, you know, some of the demographic um, analysis of the city, started looking up some of the things, looking up some of the colleges and looking up where um, some churches were. But I didn't go too in-depth until we felt really good about um, uh, the, uh, the vision trip. Um, why sh uh, what should I do on a vision trip? Um, so we talked about these first three and then couched in the idea of prayer. Um, first of all, you want to look. You want to pay attention to what you see and journal those thoughts. Uh, what do you see that's happening in the city? What do you see that is happening uh, among the other churches? Um, uh, what, do you, what kind of architecture do you see? Um, what kind of landscape? All these type of things. Just look. Uh, pay attention to what's going on around you uh, and take notes. Um, journal. I took a little notebook with me and I journaled my thoughts. And uh, it actually gave me some good questions that I actually brought back to my wife. And we were able to debrief and discuss the things that I saw, the conversations I had, and that uh, helped to influence our decision. Uh, the other thing we did, the second thing was uh, listen. Uh, we talked with people who live there. We talked with the uh, waiters and waitresses. We talked with uh, people um, at the mall, um, especially for me, it was uh, uh, Canada, uh, can pick out a southern accent, and so they would immediately ask me, so where are you from? So I'd give them to guess or, you know, different things and say, so why are you here? We would, I would explain, we're, you know, we're thinking about potentially moving here and do you think I should? Oh yeah, it's a great city. And they would say, well, do you have any kind of church relationship? And, you know, we got all kind of different answers. And uh, so, but it gave us a lay of the land, both of um, what does a typical person look like in this area, Bostonian, uh, um, I don't know, a uh, Las Veganite, I don't know. But uh, anyways, a Calgarian, what, what? 
what does an average Calgarian um, think like, and especially their spiritual climate? Uh, what is spiritually going on? So we talk with them, but we also ask them, what does life in the community look like? Is this a good place to live? Is or is it a safe city? Do you like having your family here? Is the economy good? So we ask those. So we ask those questions. Just listen um, yeah, to what they had to say, and then journal those thoughts as well. Uh, and the third thing there is learn. Ask pastors and network leaders about the Great Commission need of the city and even their hopes for the city. Uh, so I got to connect with um, several pastors and planters there in Calgary. Did the same in Boston, the same in Calgary. And um, just ask, okay, so how many churches are being planted right now? Is there a, a good sense of collaboration um, among the churches here in this city? Um, is there a, a strategy and a plan laid out geographically and even uh, across the different ethnic um, uh, divisions and um, ethnicities? Do we have, is there a plan for, for this area? Um, uh, what else is going on? So learning from the pastors who have been there, especially the ones um, who have been there for the long, uh, for the longest time. Uh, they have a deep history. They know their community very well. Uh, so learn from them uh, while you're on a vision trip. And I would say the fourth thing that kind of encompasses all of these is seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance while you are there. That's key. Uh, pray while you're there. Kind of meditate while you're there. Um, and then it also gives you things to bring back and pray for. Um, how many vision trips should I take? Um, I'd recommend at least two, but no more than four. Um, uh, usually they're about three to five days in length. You don't want to, it's not a vacation. You're not, um, uh, you know, going to you know, spend a lot of days, uh, I guess, relaxing necessarily. So you, you're, you're, you're busy each day. So it's a little bit tiring. You're driving around, you're connecting, you're meeting, um, especially if you're an introvert, it could be wear you out. So you want to, you know, realize you don't want to do that for you know, several straight days. Uh, but a trip is usually three to five days in length. And, um, and if you take two, three, at most four of those, you can get a really good lay of the land. And you, in, th in that time frame, you should be able to ask all your questions, have all the conversations you need in order to make a smart decision uh, from where you are. Um, and you're letting the Holy Spirit speak to you um, um, in each of these trips. Um, ultimately, the number of trips comes down to how many are necessary for you um, and your family, if you're married, to prayerfully decide. And so uh, from a wife and I, um, we did uh, two vision trips. I did one myself, uh, one with uh, my wife and son in the winter time. This is a Canadian winter city, and so we wanted to feel the cold um, of uh, of the north. Um, and then after that, we did those two trips, and then uh, we had an assessment trip, and then I participated in another vision trip that was more for other pastors. Um, after we had committed, and then we also did uh, a vision trip with our family. We wanted our family to come up and see it as well. So that was uh, technically the third one um, that we did. But we wanted both of both of our parents to see where we would be, and so we uh, we did that in September. But that was after we'd already uh, had got started with making plans. But it was still a vision trip because it was letting our family have a catch a vision of the city and what we would be doing there, and it actually increased their support and prayer for us. Um, and the last thing there, consider the financial costs for each trip. They're not cheap. Um, uh, you, you know, you can easily do a thousand to fifteen hundred per trip just for two of you, um, especially if you're flying a good distance. So count the cost, um, and I would recommend extending a trip, doing a four or five day trip instead of two two or three day trips because um, you can save a lot of money. You only have to pay for you know the two flights, the bookend flights not a whole other set of flights, and you're just adding some motel costs and a little extra food costs. So I would say extend a trip instead of taking another one. What should I do after a vision trip? I would say ask yourself these three questions, and you will notice these from the nine characteristics of a church plan and how they fit. Um, could I plant my family there? Um, we talked about uh, last week in calling and the assessment process, uh, to my, you know, your personal calling and wiring, your family dynamic, your emotional and spiritual health, and how that plays to your relationship with your family. Um, so could you plant uh, your family there? Could you see yourself living there? And that was a question for my wife and I. We have a young son. Um, he was um, just a few months old. We started to explore the city. He is now um, over a year and a half old. And uh, what would it look like for us to raise Kirk here in this area? Uh, that was a question that we were asking as a family. Uh, if you were a single uh, person, you're asking a different set of questions. Can I plant myself here? Um, you know, for us, we had to really ask ourselves, can we be in this kind of winter climate? Um, they, they warned us before with the vision trips. They said, if you can last two winters, you can make it. And so we had to sit down and say, are we willing to try to last for two winters? Um, 
and, 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 and of course, your family is going to be your most important ministry. And uh, so can you disciple your family well in this city? Um, so that would be the first question. Second question, can I plant the gospel there? Um, you have a class if you're in this um, the minor you're on contextualization. Can you see yourself um, understanding and um, getting to know the community so well that you know the proper and most relevant way to communicate the gospel and plant a church? Um, so missional engagement. Uh, can you see yourself um, engaging others in the gospel? Can you see yourself evangelizing? Can you see yourself making disciples? And what does that look like? Uh, Calgary's kind of a white-collar business town, and so there's a lot of um, a lot of the, the dads and uh, fathers. They they work downtown, or they have um, really kind of big, important business jobs, and they're very busy. They don't, you know, have a lot of free time during the week. So how would I, you know, change my rhythm as a pastor and disciple maker to to fit that? Um, and then social skills. Um, can you uh, get along with someone who, uh, if you're from North Carolina and you're trying to go to Seattle or Portland, uh, can you um, um, uh, realize that you may have to tone down some of your uh, southernness, as I'm going to have to do, just in order to be able to um, uh, build a relationship and build rapport uh, with, the, uh, with the people there? Third question, could I plant a church there? So there's three. Can I plant my family? Can I plant the gospel? Can I plant a church here? And that goes down to vision, leadership, and communication. Um, can I really see myself envisioning what a church plant would look like here? Do I have the leadership strengths and abilities for this particular area? Uh, you may have a lot of leadership strengths, but they're not good for the area you're looking at. And so that's where you get the assessment really helps you. And even the residency helps you mine into those and discern that as your mentors and pastors are helping you think through that. And communication. Uh, will you be able to communicate the gospel effectively, both in conversation and from a pulpit in that area? Uh, that's going to be a challenge for us because um, many Calgarians have no Christian background. And so we have to explain all the words, uh, not just the big ones. And um, so could I see myself uh, preparing and even delivering sermons in this area and having uh, conversations about Scripture and doctrine? Um, follow, uh, staying along with what should I do after a vision trip? Um, and these are just kind of some, some summarizing thoughts. I would say uh, pray and discuss with spouse, of course. Um, make sure um, your spouse and your family go with you uh, so that you can both be on the same page as you're praying and discussing this together. And um, I, I can tell you, uh, I, if, we, if my wife and I could count the hours that we spent talking about should we go to Calgary, um, you know, we could fill up several weeks, even months of time. And so uh, but you want to do a lot of this. Uh, journal your questions and your thoughts. Keep a record. Uh, write down things. Uh, my wife even wrote down, uh, uh, we together wrote down pros and cons of moving uh, to Calgary and what that would look like. And we pray through those and we, you know, uh, uh, journal those down. But also journaling your questions lets you know when you're meeting with your pastor or a trusted friend, you can say, okay, here's three things I'm really thinking about struggling with. You know me. Can you see, here's where I've learned about the city from the, the vision trip. He, you know me. Do you think I would be a good fit? Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it would be really good for someone to come up and tell you, one of the trusted friends, say, no, you wouldn't be a good fit. Uh, but when you get several affirming, yeah, I think you could be, uh, then you can keep going. Seek advice from your pastor and mentors that fits uh, with that. Uh, take your time. Uh, don't make this decision in days. Think months, not days. Um, it's, uh, take your time making this decision, especially if you're moving to a whole new area. If you're just moving across town, it may not take quite uh, quite as much of uh, a time to decide. But if you're moving to a new city, a new area, uh, think months and not days. Uh, count the cost. What's it going to cost your family? Uh, what's it going to cost uh, your current ministry, your finances, and your timing? Um, if you have uh, parents or family who um, need your assistance because of their health, then it may not be the right move to make. Um, if your current ministry is really productive and God is really blessing it, then you really do need to think, okay, is God really leading me here or am I trying to lead myself away from this current ministry? Uh, your finances, how much is it going to cost? Um, the city that we're going to has almost twice the cost of living than where we have been. And so when it comes to our fundraising, we have to consider, are we willing to raise the extra amount to live there? Um, and also timing. Um, you, God may be calling you to the city that you did a visit trip, but it may be five years down the road before you, he actually gets you there. Uh, so just consider your timing. It may not be the best time now. Um, it may be a future. Also consider what making a move entails. Um, you have to sell a house. Do you need to sell vehicles? Um, do you... Uh, 
you know, like I, like we did, had to get a visa. I had to get a, I had to apply for a religious workers visa. So there's a lot of uh, you know paperwork and things that went into that. And uh, usually your network or mission board can help you figure out if you need to do that. And for for this class, we're really talking about going from U.S. to Canada or Canada to U.S. Um, but if you're going in an international missions in any other context, you might have to have a visa. You can't just walk into a country and say, "I'm here." Uh, give me a job. I'm here to plant a church. So uh, consider what a move will entail and what you need to do to prepare for that. Um, and and you talk about counting the cost and, and of timing. Um, this has been an 18 month process for our family, um, and it has taken that long to get everything ready. So um, just know it's going to take 12 to 18 months, realistically, maybe even longer for you to get to here, even after the first vision trip. Um, our first vision trip was October 2015, and we are moving February 2017. So um, that's about 15 months or so uh, from vision trip to actually making the move. Uh, and the last thing here, which is going to transition us to the second half of this lecture, is uh, start mapping the community with a Google map. Um, we talked about uh, community mapping in, in another lecture uh, for this week with Mike Sowers from the State Conven Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. And um, his is more of a on the ground mapping and that sort of thing. Um, so I want to show you how, I, how, how I've done that using a simple Google map. And so here is one that um, I made for uh, Calgary. And I started making this uh, several months ago after one of the vision trips started um, just kind of plotting down some things. And so uh, if you're not familiar with creating a um, Google map, um, I'll show you how to get one started um, here in just a minute. But uh, I want to show you the, the gist of, of what one looks like. So I call this one just Saturate Calgary, uh, just to kind of have a landing name for um, uh, what we're looking to do. And here on the left, you see an add layer, you can share, you have a preview. Um, now each of these boxes are a layer. So when you add a layer, it will ask you to name it. And you only get so many. These are, this is, I think I maxed out on the number of layers you can have. Um, but each layer has its own, um, you can pinpoint a dot on the map and save it. And so um, when you click add a layer, says I can't do it. But when you do that, it asks you for a name of it, and then it creates it. And so for um, the first one I did, I had our house. And so we just um, landed on and agreed on a rental home in our target community. And our target community is right here. It's called Nolan Hill. And so I'm circling it here. So we're at the very top of the city. Here is downtown. It's down here. And this is the northwest quadrant. This whole area here. Uh, we actually have a thing called the Northwest so There's Northwest Quadrant. I don't want to edit the names. I need my keys. Check it off. Um, and so we have plotted where our home will be. So there it is, little green dot. So there's the Connor home. Now the other things I started mapping out, and you'll see this in your prospectus project. You'll be doing the same thing. So this is actually I'm showing you how you do your assignment because you're going to do it for your own uh, community. Um, so the first thing I started mapping out were community places, coffee shops, libraries, fitness centers. Um, community centers, those type of things, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is just uh, the one I got started with. When you click here, notice the things that pop up. So I have them uh, color coded and even icon coded. So um, these uh, black with the arrows pointing in are actually the community centers um, that uh, exist. You see coffee shops here. The pink there. These are libraries. There's an Islamic um, Association Center. There's a fitness place. Um, this is um, kind of like flywheel in Winston. It's a, um, like an office space um, type environment. So these are just a few, and there's even a, a grocery store over here. So I just want to see what was going on near our area. And um, now that we know exactly where our home will be, I'll be plotting out more of these um, more in depth um, there in our community. Um, so these are our community place, but I also want to know where the churches were. So um, since we are with uh, the Baptist churches, they're called the Canadian National Baptist Churches, the same thing as Southern Baptist here. So I wanted to plot out, and I only did it for this quarter of the city. I haven't done the whole city because um, we knew that um, uh, from the very, very beginning, the church that was sending us and recruiting us really wanted a planter in this northwest quadrant. So that's where we started focusing on. So I've only mapped the ones there. So I'll click that, and you can see where the different Baptist churches are. As you notice, there are none here in our target area. And this area right here is about 32, 33,000 people um, right here. And there's these. this is the closest um, Canadian National Baptist Church to it. Um, so those are the CNBC churches. And see, notice I did those in red because they're Canadian. Their color is red. It makes sense. Um, 
The other ones I did are just other evangelical churches. And so the purple shows some other churches in the area. Again, we see none in our target community, so it kept making sense. And you see there's actually very, there's nothing really happening hardly anywhere. Um, but then there are some other charismatic evangelical. So I wanted to plot where those are. So as you see, there's still not a lot here. So this is also if I did after a vision trip to say, okay, well, is there actually a need for churches here? Well, yeah, that answered that question just by mapping out the ones that I could find. And this was you know, Google searching different churches. Um, I want to show you how to actually add um, one of these places real fast. So there's a church that's not on here that I wanted to add, and it is an evangelical church. So, um, and whenever you are adding, know that whatever checkbox you have open, that is where it will add uh, the point to. So what I do, and if I'm going to add a new place, I check off everywhere else and get just to the category it needs to be. And so I'm adding an evangelical church. That's the only one I have checked as far as my layers. Okay. So this church is called North Point. Um, uh, uh, I was on the phone with the, one of the planters, uh, pastors there, um, who's already in the area the other day. And he said, oh, yeah, there's this church called North Point. And uh, they're an evangelical church, and he's good friends with the pastor. And uh, they're pretty close to where you want to be. I said, okay, I want to know uh, who is there so I can collaborate and get to know them. So here is, here is their website. I looked them up. I just Googled them, looked them up. And found out here's their address down here. So I'm going to copy and paste their address. And then go in here to my little search tool. All right, it turns out that they meet at Valley Creek School. All right, so I'm going to add this to my map. I'm going to edit, I want to change the name. Community Church. All right, hit save. And because it is an evangelical church, I'm going to do my color coding. So you click this little paint can here, and it's a nice purple. The purple matches. And you see you have choices of icons. So I did a cross with icon, but you actually click more icons, and you get a full um, library of different kinds of icons. And so you can see they have different uh, transportation, crisis, weather, animals, so forth, um, sports and recreation. Um, there's even one that has... Um, like there's a for like a, a civic building, so it actually tells you what they're for. So I use some of these. Um, I'm gonna go back because I actually have mine saved here, and as you use it, it'll save it there as well. So it's a purple cross. All right, so mine is there, North Point Community Church, and is now on my map here. So, so let me show you now. Let me zoom back out. And you can see where it is. Right, so where is? Let me see. Let me get zoom in a little bit more. And where is the Connor's house? Right there. So it's not too far. It's not as close as um, this Harvest Bible Chapel, but it's pretty close to our target area. So I start plotting in the other churches and seeing, okay, so the two churches that are closest to me are here and here. And so as we're ministering here, they're engaging this community as well. So we want to join them in what they're doing, but also say, okay, let's have our eye towards these other places that have nothing. So we want to help expand both this way and, and uh, to the south. Let me show you another uh, kind of a cool uh, tool that I really, really like. Um, I have one for universities and community centers, but we don't need to see those. But there's one for future communities. Uh, the city of Calgary is expanding. They're uh, zoning off land for new communities all over the place. And the reason why... Um, our Sending Church Calvary really focused on this whole quadrant. It is, it's, it's one of the quadrants seeing the most growth. Um, our our um, uh, neighborhood, Nolan Hill, is actually only halfway developed. It's uh, half new construction, and so it's being built. But they have some other communities. So I want to know, okay, what are the new planned communities for the future, and where would they be? So I've made one called Future Communities. So you can see this whole block up here is zoned, and they're expanding another 50,000 people to be living there in the next five to seven years. After they develop it, build it, they'll they'll do new roads, they'll do you know hundreds of new homes, maybe even thousands of new homes, new schools, new shopping centers, everything. And there's also another one down here uh, to the far west side. So strategically for us, being right here at the edge of this new growth is big because as we get a church plant in this area, we want to start getting some planted here as well. And so um, now, how do you make one of these? Well, let me show you. So you have some tools here. You have the little hand tool, which is just select. If you want to add a marker, if you want to just drop one somewhere, you click it. There it is. Um, I don't want to save it, so I'm going to delete it. Um, this is a um, 
how you can actually draw a shape. And so let's say I want to actually um, draw the shape of, of our own community. Let's see, it's gonna, I need to get to where I wanna be. Okay, so this is Nolan Hill, this little area right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw out uh, Nolan Hill, our community. So I'm gonna get the lines, I'm gonna add a line. I'm gonna start here at the top where it is, goes down here. So I know Nolan Hill, um, cause I looked up its boundaries are these roads. Okay, this is Nolan Hill. So it's just the Nolan Hill community. Um, and I wanna change the color and I think I'm gonna make it match kind of the green that we have going on. A little darker than that. There we go. And you can even change the transparency to very little transparency, a whole lot. So I think that's probably good, good enough for you to see. All right, you can even add like a little border width to it, but we'll just kind of keep it about medium. There we go. All right, so now you can see here on this map. Now I have it under future communities, but it is an existing community. But you, you can see where it is. And now you take it off, you don't see it, click it, and there it is. And so now when I'm looking at the map of the city, I can say, oh, our community is right on the edge of the newest, and here's where it sits geographically in the whole city, okay? So that's the, the really nice thing about um, using Google Map is that you can draw things, categorize them, um, and this is just a form of community mapping. This is the only way to do it. Um, when we land and we move into this community, we'll be doing our own on-the-ground mapping of getting to know, okay, where are the other things here that don't show up on this list? But starting with just churches, community centers, uh, fitness places, libraries, universities, that gives you just a big general idea. And as I showed, um, showed you here, this was months of researching where are the churches. Found out in our area there's not that many and so that helped us affirm for where we needed to go uh, for planting so um, to get one started let me show you how to actually get um, a new um, um, uh, map created so I have pulled up there it is okay all right let me show you how I'm just gonna show you from here so go into your Google Drive and this kind of automatically saves so we can actually um, exit out of here in that one as well. All right, so when you're uh, here on your page, you can either be on your, your uh, Gmail, your email account, or even your Google Drive. Um, but you go to your little um, apps over here to the right and simply click Maps. And this will give you the standard maps. If you need directions to get to Walmart, this is where you would go. You would type it in. Um, but you click these three bars, the menu bars, and you see several options go down to your places right. and you have labels so like I have my home here in Winston-Salem right now saved as, a, as an address and have this Harvest Bible Chapel saved because one of the first churches I looked up there but you see labels say visit and you see maps so you click maps and here are the maps that I've actually created All right. so a while ago I actually got started with creating one called Untitled to test it out make sure it was still the same but so here's my saturated Calgary here's my route that my dad and I are taking a drive there here is something I did for my pastor a few months ago when he was doing a tour of the Reformation cities in Germany. Um, there in uh, Hernhut and uh, Wittenberg and some places. Um, and then I did one for Piedmont International University for a networking event that we did. So if you want to, you see your maps here, you go down to the bottom and say create map. This is what you will do for your class assignment for the perspective. So when you get to your perspectives, you will do this. You'll create a map and go ahead and title it. So I want to name it test map for class all right so right now we have one layer well look it gives us all the u.s and so let's find a familiar address 420 south broad 27101 those of you who live in the dorms or know this very well this is piedmont's address okay so it's piedmont international so let's go ahead and add it shows it let's add to our map and we'll make it a nice uh let's see where's the icon for school Uh, this is a civic building. There's one for school somewhere. Where is it? Uh, museum, place of worship. You probably see it. You're probably laughing at me and pointing to it right now. I'll tell you what. This one looks close enough to a school. 
All right, and let's make it, since we are the Bruins, that's about the blue color, all right? And so now um, I'm going to click our little edit tool, name it PIU, and click save. All right, so if we were mapping this area, we can zoom out. <clears throat> so that's how we just created one. Now we're on the untitled layer, so let's go ahead and rename that layer. I'm going to rename it to, um, I think we're calling it for you guys, an anchor address. So this is the address you're starting from. Not necessarily where your church will meet, but find an anchor address. All right, so we're going to consider Piedmont. Now, if we were mapping this community, even here on Google gives us a good idea. Well, when we zoomed in, we actually saw that there is Salem Baptist right here. So, okay, there's another church. We can go ahead and add it. So let's click it and add it to map, and we'll just leave it as it is for right now. Instead of changing colors, so we're just um, uh, demonstrating. And we also, oh, let's see, there's Christ Church Raven Fellowship. So let's go ahead and, <clears throat> actually these are the same uh, churches, but we'll just add one of them, add to the map, and you know, we'll go ahead and just make it one of our church buildings. It said place of worship, so let's see. Oh, museum. There it is, place of worship. All right, so there we go. And because I'm a little OCD, I might have to change Salem matters now. You know how it is. Let's see, you guys see a little closer. There it is, place of worship. All right, so then. Okay, so there's at least two churches that are right here near Piedmont. Let's, let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's see what else we have in our community. Oh, there's Salem College. Let's go ahead and add it. And we'll just change the color. To something different for right now. All right, we'll look around. Oh, there's a YWCA. That's important to note. Let's add it to our map. All right, and here's the, the neat thing. If you want to add some description to it, you go here. You can copy and paste the link. You know, www.ywca. Winston, say I don't know if that's the address, but let's say it is. All right, and you can have that, and it'll, it'll save it for you. All right, and oh, university, here's uh, School of the Arts. So let's go ahead and map it. And we want to make it the same kind of orange red color. And we're going to call it university. Okay, so let's, go, let's just stick with that for right now. So we've already plotted, I mean, just in, what, two minutes, we plotted all these things just by looking um, on the map of what happened. Here's even Winston-Salem State over here, and there's more shopping places and different things. But let's just look at this area for right now. And so let's say, you know what, we want to actually kind of map out the boundaries of the community and because I know this community well uh, this you see the West Salem here the West Salem area goes down Peters Creek down this highway up 52 and here is business 40 or for highway 421 so this is kind of the boundary so let's um let's create our boundary for it and remember this is all going into the um, I'm actually demonstrating it poorly for you so you see how we add a layer so let's add a layer that says boundary Community boundary. All right. All right. So now let's add our lines. You can even add a driving route. Some other things. Pretty neat. All right. So let's do this. We look kind of rough. Okay, so there is our West Salem neighborhood. Okay, and let's not make it too dark and gloomy. Yeah, a little bit of a border to it. And make it have transparent. Okay, so now we see our boundary. So let's go ahead and add our um, plots we pointed. So here's another really cool tool that I really like about. Um, Google Maps, you want to see the distance from these. So, you know, here we have, here is Piedmont, our anchoring address. There's a little, um, you can also add directions to things if you want to. There's a little ruler here. So you can actually measure distance. So if you click here on the school, let's find out how far Salem College is. Watch what happens. It tells you Salem College is a little over half a mile away. Well, how far is uh, School of the Arts? Uh, just over a mile away. How far is with Salem State University? Well, I'm just a mile and a third away. How far is this Moravian Church? 700 feet. How far is Salem? 328 feet. Okay, so it's a really neat tool. Um, so you actually can 
see geographically uh, how far you are away from things. And so um, this lets you know, hey, students can actually walk to Salem College. It's half a mile. You can walk to Salem College and start Bible studies or start studying on campus there in order to engage. And so this is some cool things. So what you want to do for the assignment for this week, you, uh, the lead planter in your group, you, know, you want to, you know, you with your team, are going to decide an anchoring address, kind of like we did with Piedmont, uh, like we did with our home. You can find an anchoring address. And there's a list of places I want you to find. I want you to find the churches that are nearby, that anchoring address, whether you're in Calgary, Chattanooga, uh, or Seattle, whichever the city for the project. Uh, so you're going to map those out. You're going to build layers on your map, and you're going to put, uh, you know, uh, the community places. You're going to put the other religious things, um, um, religious uh, venues. You want to do uh, churches, and there's a whole list of questions you're going to do. So when you plot these out, plot them on the map, and I'm going to actually pull up your map. What you're going to do, you're going to click share, and you're going to make sure that it's shared with the other person on your team. So lead pastor, make sure you put their email in, and also put mine in there. Mine is Connor D1. Here it is at PiedmontU.edu. You want to do that. You want to share it with me and share it with your other teammate. And in that way, and also make sure that they can edit. Okay? Make sure. And once you send that, it's shared and they have access to it. Okay? So share it with me and share it with your team. And uh, as you start building the map, have fun with it. Uh, this is actually a really fun project because you get to you know find, figure out how to use Google Map and you get to do some kind of um, high, high in the air, um, kind of big picture mapping but then when you get there uh, of course you won't get there for this class but uh, when you do get to your city in the future for where you're planting you already have all these places mapped and you know have an idea then you start mapping out and get to know the community itself um, so that's going to conclude uh, what we're talking about in this lecture as far as vision trips and uh, google mapping for your church plant